Franz von Kerning, Writings by Frank Schmidt, on the Danube Swabian people. These collected writings are republished in memory of the author, Frank Schmidt, so that others may continue to enjoy his work. May his spirit live on. A bittersweet reminder. A nostalgic recollection of an Atlantic crossing by an 11-year-old boy in June 1933 on the good ship General von Steuben, the tragic fate of the vessel in February 1945, and the discovery of the wreck at the bottom of the Baltic Sea in September 2002. In a heroic attempt to save some of the civilian population of Germany's eastern provinces, Grand Admiral Karl Duenitz speedily reactivated some passenger ships that were laid up during the war and used them to transport civilian women and children Red Cross nurses and wounded German soldiers to the West to save them from a fate worse than death at the hands of the advancing Soviet troops. In the English-speaking world, little is known of the three most catastrophic sinkings by Soviet submarines, which stayed on their bases during much of World War II, but eventually ventured into enemy waters in the closing months of that war, when the Soviet army occupied much of the territory, bordering the Baltic Sea. They sank a number of unarmed German refugee ships, including Wilhelm Guslov Goya and Steuben. On January 30th, 2003, I was reminded that 58 years ago, Wilhelm Guslov, a former cruise ship with 6,000, 600 women children, Red Cross nurses, and German wounded soldiers, was sunk by a Soviet submarine under the command of Captain II Class Alexander Marinsko. 5,343 people went down with the ship. The sinking of this ship accounts for the greatest single loss of life of any marine disaster in the history of mankind. But this is practically unknown in the Western world. The second largest was when the Goya was sunk in the Gulf of Danzig only days before the end of the war. The third was the Steuben, which sank off the coast of what was then still the German Pomerania on February 10, 1945. Steuben was originally named General von Steuben in honor of a German officer who trained American troops at Valley Forge during the American War of Independence to underscore the close ties the German people had with America over the centuries. This ship is of special interest to me because in June of 1933, she brought me my mother and younger brother from Cuxhaven in Germany to New York City. For an inquisitive youngster who had never been more than 20 kilometers from his home, this was a great adventure. I had, of course, never been on a ship before, but during the 10-day voyage, I got to see most of the shit due to a kindly purser who took the time to show me places not normally accessible to passengers. One of the first places he showed me was the engine room. I was impressed by the great power of the huge engines that turned the drive shaft and the propellers and was astounded by their untiring effort to propel the ship across the vastness of the ocean. The fuel was probably coal, but the engine room was very clean and gleaming in what seemed to be a new coat of paint. Nowhere was there cold dust to be seen. We also visited the kitchen where meals were being prepared. Here, the purser gave me a banana, something I had never seen before. He saw that I was puzzled and told me to peel it and eat the inside. That was my introduction to bananas. On another day, he led me to the bridge where I met the captain and some of the ship's officers all dressed in natty uniforms. The bridge with its big compass and other instruments was very impressive, and I got a good view of the wide ocean before us. When the helmsman let me hold the tiller with him, it made my day. I felt that I was steering this huge shit over the endless ocean that lay before my very eyes. This was a great thrill, and will remain in my memory as long as I live. Although we were not immigrants to the USA, but were in transit to Canada, we still had to be processed on Ellis Island. After a couple of days, we were on our way to Canada. When our bus crossed the Rainbow Bridge at Niagara Falls, Ontario, the Carillon Bells and the Peace Tower were chiming. Although I knew better, I imagined that they rang just for us. What a beautiful welcome to our new country. A short time later, we arrived in Toronto, our final destination, where we were welcomed by my father, who had come to Canada in 1929. That was the beginning of a new life for me. Much larger and faster German passenger ships like the Bremen and Europa could cross the Atlantic in half the time, and soon the older and slower ships were taken off the transatlantic run. The General von Steuben's hull was painted white, and she became one of the 12 cruise ships owned or leased by the German labor front to take German workers on holidays at nominal cost to destinations in the Mediterranean and the fjords of Norway. These ships were not allowed to dock in England, lest the army of unemployed British workers learn the truth of conditions in Germany. Cruises for working people began in pre-war Germany and did not become commonplace in other countries until well after the war. Contrary to the rest of the world at that time, there was full employment in Germany. What's more, workers received two weeks vacation with pay something unheard of in much of the world. As I distinctly recall, this was at a time when I saw dejected and hungry unemployed men lining up in soup kitchens in Toronto for sustenance. The lineups sometimes stretched around city blocks. Due to the U.S. President Roosevelt's belligerent stance toward Germany, the ship's name was shortened to Steuben in 1938. In September 1938, in September 1930, nine Britain and France declared war on Germany, thus turning the local border dispute into a world war. The cruises were terminated, and the ships either became mobile residences for German naval personnel in training along the Baltic coast, or like the Steuben served as auxiliary hospital ships that transported German wounded soldiers from the Gulf of Riga to hospitals in the west. In the fall of 1944, she was reactivated by Grand Admiral Karl Dunitz, 
and put in service to rescue German civilians from the clutches of the advancing Soviets in what became the far-reaching ethnic cleansing of people in the history of Europe that was initiated and sanctioned by the Allies. On February 9, 1945, the Steuben under the command of Captain Wilhelm Peterson left Pillow in West Prussia with 4,657 refugees, mostly women and children, on board, as well as a large contingent of nurses and wounded soldiers. After safely passing through a minefield, the captain set course for Kiel in Schleswig-Holstein, which they would reach by the next evening. There was indescribable misery on board. Every deck was filled to overflow. Many of the passengers were wounded or sick German soldiers. Most could not help themselves, and the medical personnel could only give perfunctory attention to those in dire need. The ship's officers had their hands full, guiding the ship through dangerous waters in the middle of the night. Just before midnight, Steuben passed over the spot where the Wilhelm Gustloff was torpedoed, just two weeks before. But the passengers knew nothing about the incident. After midnight, the crew breathed a sigh of relief, because no enemy submarine had yet been sighted west of that point. Unknown to the crew, the Soviet submarine S-3 under Captain Alexander Marinsko was lurking in the dark in wait for German refugee ships. He had sent Wilhelm Gustloff to the bottom, just two weeks before, and hoped to sink another ship, which would qualify him as a hero of the Soviet Union. At 056 hours on February 10, two Soviet torpedoes tore a big hole in the ship, and she immediately began to list starboard. The captain desperately tried to beach the Steuben on the nearby Pomeranian coast but, to no avail. The ship was sinking too fast. There was panic on board, and everybody tried to reach the upper deck. However, the fate of the non-ambulatory wounded below deck was sealed. The crew did a magnificent job of launching lifeboats and rafts. When the stern rose out of the water, the captain gave the order to abandon ship. Only 15 minutes later, the Steuben disappeared from the surface of the sea. Of the 4,657 people on board, only 656 were saved while the others went to the bottom of the icy Baltic Sea with the ship. This vessel, once a ship of dreams, had now turned into a coffin. Were any of the crew of 1933 on board? Unfortunately, I will never know. I recently read that German diver Ulrich Restemeyer and his crew of eight divers found the wreck of the Steuben on the bottom of the Baltic Sea in September 2002. She lies at a depth of 23 meters, just 23 meters, just 23 nautical miles off in what used to be German Pomerania. She is apparently covered in fishermen's nets that have snagged on her rusting hulk. The site has been declared a German war cemetery. May the souls of those who perished with her rest in peace, a peace that was denied to them in their lifetime. General von Steuben played an unforgettable part in my life, for I was that 11-year-old boy she transported across the Atlantic when there's still peace in the world. I shall never forget her kind crew, or those who perished with her in the darkness of the Baltic Sea so many years ago. Thank you for joining us in this poignant journey through history as we've explored the story of the General von Steuben, a ship that played a significant role in the lives of many. Let's recap three key aspects of this video. First, we learned about the brave and heroic efforts made by Grand Admiral Karl Duenitz to rescue civilian populations, nurses, and wounded soldiers from the advancing Soviet troops during World War I using passenger ships like the General von Steuben. Second, we delved into the tragic fate of the Steuben and the harrowing sinking that occurred on February 10, 1945, as it became a victim of Soviet submarines in the Baltic Sea. The loss of life and the suffering endured by those on board were unimaginable. Third, we heard a personal recollection from the perspective of an 11-year-old boy who embarked on an Atlantic crossing on the General von Steuben in 1933, highlighting the ship's earlier role in providing travel experiences and glimpses of distant lands for passengers like him. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What emotions or thoughts does this story evoke in you, especially considering the historical context and personal experiences shared? Please share your reflections and insights in the comments below. If you found this video compelling and moving, we kindly ask you to show your support. Please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and consider sharing this video with your Danube, Swabian friends, and social groups. Your small actions can help us continue to bring you meaningful content. Thank you for being a part of our community, and may the memories of the General von Steuben and those who sailed on her remain alive in our hearts. Until next time, stay connected, and never forget. Wir sind Donauschwaben, Kinders, Kinder. 